Right, let's get you started on that conversation about marriage and divorce this morning. It's one uncomfortable subject that most people don't want to talk about it because when we enter into marriage and when we tie the knot, we hope that death is the only thing that will separate uh, the two, of course, who have become one. But what happens when divorce precedes death? And that is what we want to discuss this morning with my fantastic panel of guests this morning. Joining me, of course, in studio this morning is Jenny Washira. She's the founder of Sadriv Africa. Jenny, good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning, Victor. All right. And also joining us this morning is Daniel Were, a civic educator and evangelist. Good morning, Daniel, and welcome to the show. Good morning, Victor. All right. Also joining us virtually this morning is Frederick Osoro. He's a counseling psychologist. Good morning, Frederick. Welcome to the show. Good morning to you, Victor. All right. And we also want you to be part of this conversation. That we, that's why we ask you on our question of the day this morning. What's behind the rise in, uh, of course, the numbers of divorce cases in recent years? You can tweet us at NTV Kenya and at Victor Kiprop underscore using the hashtag new normal. You can also uh, be part of this conversation by following it on Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Instagram, where we are streaming live. If you're not on social media, you can call in or text in, uh, of course, on the numbers, which will be on the bottom of your screen in a short while. But for now, let me just start with uh, Jenny and, and Daniel, because Jenny, you will agree with me that before we talk about divorce, there has to be a marriage first. And that's where maybe we should start this uh, conversation briefly from where you say just give us um, a brief, of course, uh, history of your experience uh, in marriage and before, of course, you decided uh, that maybe uh, the rain has beat us too much and maybe it's time to, to, to part ways. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Victor, for this opportunity. Yeah, if uh, I may start, as you say for sure, before uh, divorce, there has uh, to be, there was a marriage, you know? Yeah. Yes, uh, I was married for 12 years, and now I've been divorced, uh, this being the ninth year. Okay. And uh, I'm a mother of uh, uh, two beautiful daughters. And like anybody else, any uh, girl who has a dream of just getting into uh, married and finding this partner that uh, you are going to do life together, you are going to do marriage together. I got to that point and uh, I, I met this person and we met early in our, uh, in our young age. We were in college. Okay. Yeah, so we uh, definitely started uh, from a humble beginning, you mm -hmm. know, from scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, not really bringing uh, the titles or the money things in. And that is uh, for me that I saw a person that we could walk this journey together. Okay. And uh, I can attest that uh, the first three years going to four years, life was good. Uh, like anybody else, we say it was the honeymoon period yeah. that we really adored each other. We respected each other. And we were there, you know, to stay. There was no anything of, uh, like, uh, getting out of this union. Yeah. Yeah, like anybody else, you don't get in a marriage to, to get out. Oh, uh, to, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I got to that point that I was in, and I, had, I, had give, I gave it my all, you know. My all, be it uh, my emotions, my heart, everything was in that uh, marriage. Until this time when things started uh, looking like uh, it's not the norm, you know, what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. And one thing I can pick it out, uh, like uh, there was a life that I was used to, you know, the life of getting, uh, you respect each other, mm -hmm. and the life of we need to have a discussion, there was communication, but all of a sudden there was uh, no communication, you know. Uh, this person chooses to do whatever he does at whatever time with no explanation. Mm -hmm. And then uh, second thing uh, that um, I observed, uh, this person uh, was not ready, uh, was not a priority in his life, that he could do things 
uh, uh, not consulting me. He could go wherever and even either come late or not come at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm not supposed to ask about all that. Okay. Yeah, so for me, these things, I think uh, that's where I started uh, the, the red flags. Now I can say I started like things are not right. I just need to uh, observe exactly and just get a reason why this is happening. Okay. And al also the issue of uh, he was not uh, emotionally available. Mm -hmm. And for most of the periods, uh, there was desertion, like even he could desert us with the kids for almost a year, go and come back with no explanation. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, he took a break from marriage. Mm -hmm. That's how I can put it, which I found it uh, really not right yeah. and lacking a lot, a lot of uh, respect. And finally, the thing that got in, mm. uh, when I tried to confront and maybe ask for a... Um, communication or explanation about what was happening that's where physical violence mm -hmm. now uh, came in mm -hmm. and that is where at that point that it was really too much to bear yeah and, and maybe to, yes okay just proceed yes yes and maybe to mention yeah uh, I know I really when I was there uh, we had uh, moments of uh, uh, separation like t twice or thrice like uh, he moves out and all this time just take this note that he's the one who moved out uh, I never moved out because I was at a moment that I wanted to make my marriage work but mm -hmm. uh, due to pressure and uh, the environment was too toxic yeah. he opted out then after things did not work out there he came back again like twice or uh, three times before we finally uh, uh, separated. Okay, so th that, that means you really tried to fight for this? Yes, I have not once, mm -hmm. not twice. Mm -hmm. I really tried once, but, uh, I mean, uh, by just bringing him on board, can we have a conversation? Mm -hmm. Since we are the two parties yeah. who started it together, we know the agreement we had, we know what we put on the table before we started it. Mm -hmm. Can we have a conversation? Mm -hmm. And all the time, he avoided that. He did not want to come to that point where we could uh, have this discussion. Even to a point I had to like uh, get to a point of admitting the mistakes that I did not do. Like being remorseful yeah. just to allow him uh, to be able to talk yeah. and uh, at least so that we can resolve this. Okay. That one did not work. I know second I got to a counselor. We had sessions with a counselor. Yeah. And to some point, uh, as we continued with the sessions, I felt like I was in the counseling sessions alone. The person mm -hmm. was not there. He was coming for formality. But his heart, his mind was not there. Okay. So it did not work. That we involved the church. Mm -hmm. And some leaders in the church, they walked with us through this journey. But again, it uh, hit a dead end. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Let me just bring in uh, Dan at this point. Dan, we've heard from Jenny and she says she's been uh, divorced for, uh, I believe, this is her ninth year. Let's just briefly uh, listen and get to hear about your, your experience and maybe when the rain uh, started beating and you decided to perhaps uh, maybe separation is the way to go. Uh, good morning, uh, Victor. Um, glad to, to be here. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, uh, I just want to put a disclaimer. Yeah. Uh, these issues, uh, usually people are really uh, are very nervous and uh, not very open to talk about. Yeah. Uh, especially from a, a man's point of view. Yes. And that's why we thank actually both of you for your bravery to decide to co actually come and talk and come forward and talk about uh, this issue by highlighting your experience. Yes. Thank you so much. But they say also silence uh, is not good. Mm -hmm. We need to be open about some things because they are happening. Uh, we can't hide in our closets. Um, the disclaimer I want to put is uh, normally when we are invited to such shows, you are putting across your story. Mm -hmm. Nobody has heard about the other side. Yeah. And as we talk about our story, yeah. we are uh, uh, assumed to be innocent. Yeah. We are assumed to be the victim. The whole year. Uh, the survivor. But we forget that there's the other person also. Mm -hmm. We forget that there is a social capital maybe the two of you had developed over time. Yeah. And uh, sometimes when we appear on such shows, 
Uh, could be also we are hurting the other person mm -hmm. because they, we don't have their consent, first of all, to share our stories. Yeah. And so I want to just um, come to apologize that we are not doing this to uh, poke holes or uh, embarrass the other party. Mm -hmm. We are doing this because there are many, many people out there who are suffering in silence. Yeah. And they need to hear and know. Of course, the pattern is not the same. Yeah. People walk through this uh, uh, journey in uh, different, different dimensions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, coming back to uh, your question, yeah, I was in marriage for uh, 11 uh, good years. Okay. It was a good marriage. We never uh, really had any issues. Mm -hmm. And um, throughout that period, I think uh, I, I learned a lot. And uh, our separation was mostly... Uh, orchestrated by uh, distance, mm -hmm. where one is uh, living abroad, one is uh, in the country. Oh, okay. And of course, uh, uh, you just start uh, realizing before you know it that you are not pulling along. Mm -hmm. uh, misunderstandings envelope over time. Uh, some of the things you can explain, some you cannot even explain. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, I want to uh, just appreciate the fact that uh, we tried our best. Uh, even to go through the legal system. We yeah. were legally married through uh, a church wedding. Yeah. Uh, and we, we had uh, this uh, lots of support mm -hmm. uh, from people. Yeah. Even at the point of uh, disengaging, we also still got a lot of support from people. Mm -hmm. And so when I speak like this, I'm aware that there are people who are watching and they know us, mm -hmm. but the point is not really to... Uh, point the other person as uh, uh, wrong, yeah, because that went before the court, and the court had its uh, a session of uh, uh, trying to adjudicate and arbitrate, yeah. And uh, uh, as uh, uh, my colleague has said, my my, my fellow uh, participant in this uh, 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 show has said, yeah, it all starts with a smile. Mm -hmm. It all starts with the agreement. It all starts with love. It all starts very well, and we bring in people. Uh, to celebrate uh, our union. Mm -hmm. We bring involved church, we involve society, we are bringing in friends in dowry negotiations, we are mobilizing. It is a social affair, so it's not a secret when people are coming together. And so when people are parting again, it's not a secret. Mm -hmm. You want to make it a secret. Mm -hmm. But what we are saying is that uh, <coughs> the support system uh, uh, which is part of the social capital you develop over time. Yeah. Uh, because you go to a church to, uh, to, to be um, joined. Yeah. And so you are involving church all mm -hmm. the way from pre-marital uh, counseling. Mm -hmm. The church is involved. If you go to church, that is not everybody marries through church. Mm -hmm. But even where you are uh, uh, coming together through uh, customary arrangements, yeah. I believe, again, there is a process that involves people. Mm -hmm. They are coming together, and I'm sure there is counsel from elders. Yeah. That is also premarital counseling. Okay. And, and maybe, Dan, before just I, bring, I bring in uh, Frederick briefly, the, the, the challenge is sometimes that support that you're talking about is seen more largely during the wedding day because it's colorful and we are celebrating uh, this milestone for you. But when it's time to talk about separation, you, you, you get to see that the number of people who are standing with you is, is, is becoming less and less. Yes, it's a very painful thing because uh, you are spending a lot of time and resources to mobilize for a day, a mm -hmm. wedding day. And when this day comes, people, uh, they, you know, they, they congratulate you, they are there, you are celebrating, and then you start the journey. So for me... I tell uh, everybody who cares to listen, marriage is not the wedding day, it's not the preparation. Marriage is now what you two people who have agreed, put together and, uh, you know, start a journey. And uh, in this journey, you have to bring in uh, uh, certain elements of uh, compromises and uh, you, because you are two strangers coming to live together. Mm -hmm. And so you want to understand each other from that point. What you have been told becomes irre irrelevant at that point eh? mm -hmm. as you embark into this journey. Mm -hmm. But yes, this social capital, which includes and involves all people, relatives, friends, and uh, you know, colleagues at work, yeah. they expect you to do your best. Mm -hmm. Everybody identifies with success. Nobody wants to identify with failure. And so when you start and uh, give example, and I want to congratulate those who are in marriage, 
and have endured a lot of things because it is not easy. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, it's not just about you. You are building a nest. But in this nest will come uh, in-laws, will come friends whom you have to endure. And that is part and parcel of uh, building a relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, children will come in. A lot of uh, enterprise will be built over time. And so you are, def you are basically building a life together. Okay. And people expect you to, do, to be your best. Mm -hmm. So the moment there are cracks, yeah. and sometimes they don't show. And many times people hide those cracks. Mm -hmm. And that is why it is imperative to have these kinds of shows where people can uh, speak, mm -hmm. uh, not because uh, we are glorifying divorce or separation, yeah. but because we want people to learn from uh, uh, what uh, uh, others have experienced. Mm -hmm. uh, as a man now, for example, uh, I had a lot of friends, you know, married. We would be invited to uh, parties. We would be invited to graduation ceremonies, baptism ceremonies, you know, as a couple. But you see, the moment uh, you are apart, mm -hmm. you, you become the bad example. Who wants you near their children to, 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 to you know, to, you, 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 mm. you, you become antisocial, you know, in a way. Mm -hmm. And uh, two things happen. Before you know it, you are either separating yourself unconsciously from people, mm -hmm. uh, going into self-isolation, yeah. or you are being isolated either way. Mm -hmm. And worse for a man. Uh, uh, for, for, for the okay, ladies get, bear the, the brunt of this mostly. Mm -hmm. But what I've realized as a, a single uh, uh, senior bachelor now, mm -hmm. uh, just celebrated my 56th uh, birthday the other day. Congratulations! Thank you so much. Yeah, and so people are looking at you, and uh, even when you try to forge other relationships, yeah, why we speak about this is because you will be judged. You will be judged because people want to understand what happened. Mm -hmm. Even when you have the best of intentions, still you really keep on explaining yourself. And then the other thing is also you, you, you walk as though, I have talked about this many times. Yeah. You walk as though you are in a funeral because people feel something went wrong about you. You, 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 you feel like dead, mm -hmm. a little bit dead. M maybe Jenny can weigh in at that point. Yeah, as uh, Dan was talking, there are a few things that I, I picked. Yeah. And uh, what I can say, that is the reason even why we are here today. Mm -hmm. Because we want to change the narrative. We want to change the negative stereotype about uh, the divorced people. Because mm -hmm. we know there has been a lot of uh, stigma. Yeah, because people do not want to be identified with failure. Mm -hmm. People do not want to be associated with that, that person who, could not, who couldn't keep their marriage. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I can say, something very important that Dan has said, it takes two to tango. Even in a failure of that marriage, it's not that we are trying to paint ourselves as the most perfect people mm -hmm. but we have learned our mistakes you know mm -hmm. we have turned we have learned what we contributed mm -hmm. to the failure of that marriage okay and what i would want to mention uh which is real which is what is happening out there the society you know uh should learn how to embrace these kind of people mm -hmm. because they are human one they are hurting they are struggling they are also trying to understand what exactly happened mm -hmm. after giving their best what exactly uh, did not go well okay so they are also at that point really they are struggling try to understand emotionally mm -hmm. you know and also just uh, having the physical breakup what we say that is death mm -hmm. and is a death that has no closure this is a person that you'll get to meet you get to hear about you get to uh, I just get to see how he's getting on yeah which of course it will not have a positive impact on you mm -hmm. you know okay. so we say this is a de death that has so much pain mm -hmm. since there is no day you'll bring closure to this completely so Thank these you. people need to be embraced okay 
we are th we, these people need to be embraced even by the church mm -hmm. because we have uh, a certain point the church does not want to be associated with you as well mm -hmm. maybe you you have uh, shown the negative side of uh, that congregant you know mm -hmm. as uh, they are as the pastor keep on preaching about that good person forgiving and all that, yeah. so you find yourself on the other side of things uh, failing. Okay. So at that point, you find even the church rejects you. Okay. Even maybe you are serving in church, in mm -hmm. leadership. You are asked to step down. You know, you are not portraying that person who should be in leadership. Okay. And this is just to bring this, to voice it out, to bring this cry out that mm -hmm. these are people who are struggling the same way other people are struggling with other things. They are just trying to get their space mm -hmm. after this thing, after going through this um, breakup, which is emotionally draining okay yeah so is my cry out there even at some point you get even families mm -hmm. they reject you even at a point your parent they don't they don't want okay they came for your wedding you know they gave you out they mm -hmm. don't want again to get to a point like the village the whole village is seeing you coming back home mm -hmm. so they like you failed my dear you know you mm -hmm. need to keep your uh, your house uh, in order okay. and that's why you find even the we have high rates of uh, violence happening because mm -hmm. of that thing you want to be there to please the society mm -hmm. you want to be there to please your parents you have to be there to look good before other people but what exactly are you going through mm -hmm. you lose yourself mm -hmm. you lose your sanity you lose exactly who you are there before mm -hmm. you know which again is not even healthy for that marriage, is not healthy mm -hmm. for that relationship because it, you, it, 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 uh, you'll be toxic, you know. It will turn out to be something else. Okay. So is a cry out there just for people to embrace this kind of people. You okay. know, they must have failed, either willingly or not willingly, but we learn also through mistakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just for us to voice it out that people shouldn't victimize this kind of people, you know. Okay. Yeah, the stigma is too much. We need the people, these people to be embraced, these people okay. to be supported. And Thank that's you. why, uh, as Dan was talking, I was like, people do not want, uh, especially the family friends you had, yeah? Yeah. And they could call you for parties, you know, all, all that. All of a sudden, they are not nowhere. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, the couple, you know, they don't want to be associated with you. M mm -hmm. Maybe because you are single, you might not be a good example to them. And everyone and is children. coming, everyone is coming with their husband, but you have to come alone. Good. Now you become a threat. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. as a, a single lady, mm -hmm. you become a threat to that family. Mm -hmm. The lady will be like, I'm not sure how this is going to end with my husband there. Mm -hmm. And again, for the husband, they, they check, uh, they, they look at you like a threat, like you're teaching their wives mm -hmm. to be, you know, to... Uh, to survive out of their marriage so you be, no one wants to have you near them okay so i know this is something that uh, uh, it's really uh, hurting you go through so much and that's why i, I say that we really need support okay thank out you there. Yeah. thank you and, and of course i have to mention that dan kanokash is an advocate of the high court of kenya has joined us he'll be helping us uh, delve into this especially on the legal the legal aspect of divorce but just before i bring him in uh, we also have fred he's a counseling psychologist and he's joining us fred the problem is with divorce is it's a very uh, messy affair of course and mentally uh, straining situation and it's made worse uh, by the situation that dan and jenny have, have highlighted which is when there's a lot of stigma and you don't receive the support from the people who should ideally be supporting you. Yeah, uh, I could want to agree with uh, Jen and Dan uh, that uh, divorce is uh, something that is happening and uh, the cases are increasing. In fact, even uh, in our field in counseling, so many issues of divorce and separation are arising. It's only that uh, many have not been able to formalize their se uh, separation. Mm -hmm. uh, but we find that um, there are so many issues that arise before uh, that time of separation and divorce. And uh, indeed, uh, stigma, as Jen has been emphasizing, mm -hmm. is uh, something that is making them to fear a lot mm -hmm. to formalize uh, this uh, separation. Mm -hmm. And even after separation, you find that uh, these people are isolated and they don't find a place in the society very well. Uh, but again, uh, I, as uh, Jen was uh, speaking and then I was uh, uh, asking myself, mm -hmm. why are all these cases 
are rising so much and are trying to look at uh, the view experiences in therapy. Yeah. And I was realized that, that there are so many changes in this time mm -hmm. uh, that you find uh, people are not living like in the past. Like a family has lost its role in the society mm -hmm. to some level, the function of the family, the function of uh, the full family, whereby we have a husband, we have a wife, we have children. Uh, you find that uh, also people are isolated, the families are isolated are not too much out. As Dan was saying, mm -hmm. people want to put their issues in secret. Mm -hmm. They don't want to expose themselves. So this uh, this is also what is causing uh, some of the issues of couples going uh, unresolved. You find that they do not want to speak out, and maybe the society um, institutions like the church and other institutions are not supporting enough, mm -hmm. and that is why they are not inviting these people to express themselves. People do not have enough uh, room to express themselves. And uh, then you find, again, technology and other changes are raising expectations, such that people are coming to marriage with the different expectations mm -hmm. than before. Mm -hmm. You see, like, uh, people who are, um, who are married 50 years ago, 30 years ago, even 10 years ago, and people who are between zero and five years have different expectations. Uh, so you find that um, also I'm appreciating uh, one reality that has been presented. Yeah. Uh, like listening to Jenna, and I realize that communication patterns eh, mm -hmm. are, uh, you find that uh, the communication breakdown, mm -hmm. the couples are not communicating well to one another. Okay. Uh, so most. Uh, issues of the family uh, become a bit difficult to understand mm -hmm. because family is different than an individual. Mm -hmm. Even when we are um, getting into contact with an individual and then at some point a family, we find that for an individual, you express your own issues as a person that are uh, the issues that are inside you mm -hmm. and the issues that are uh, also, regard those who you interact with and the situations you interact with and past experiences. Eh? Okay. But for family, most of the issues are within the patterns, whereby we find uh, the first is uh, this family, uh, the communication pattern. Mm -hmm. Maybe when the couple was beginning uh, to bond, they had a communication whereby they used to uh, have free intra interaction. Yeah. They used to communicate. Uh, in a way that they are so close, they used to give secrets to each other, but now it reaches a point whereby uh, these people have a distance, such that uh, they are not communicating well. It's not about uh, the physical distance only, mm -hmm. but also uh, that failure to get into contact with another person, even through phone, okay. and also being free to another person. All right. So that uh, also the hierarchical patterns, eh? the okay. power, okay. power in relation to maybe resources or other factors. All right. Uh, I see that the issues are rising uh, very much even uh, on our area. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, you find that uh, even marriage and family therapists are a few. Mm -hmm. And maybe people are not able to identify who is the right person to talk to. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, for the legal process, you find that uh, not many people are free mm -hmm. to go through the legal process again because Ac of some reasons. Actually, let me just bring in uh, Duncan because you have mentioned uh, the legal process. Duncan, maybe f for us uh, on the Mananchi level, divorce could mean uh, mumewachana. But there's a legal definition of a divorce. Just talk to us about uh, what it entails and, and the process that, that, that one goes through when they decide they want to separate. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Uh, indeed, um, I, I've heard what my co-panelists have indicated yeah. and uh, they cannot be more apt on that particular topic. Mm -hmm. So to take it further, uh, divorce, uh, just like marriage, is a legal process. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you'll find that uh, the Constitution under uh, Article 45 
has actually now recognized even customary marriages mm -hmm. so that you can have marriages which um, uh, were contracted in a customary setup mm -hmm. no one went to church there was no, no one certificate went to the General. yes no one went to the ag's office mm -hmm. but to that particular extent it, it is still a marriage so that the divorce process is then uh, not similar to the, the marriage process mm -hmm. whereby you cannot then go back to the elders to the village uh, the setup and uh, and and indicate that you've returned the dowry and mm -hmm. say that that is a divorce mm -hmm. divorce then must be formalized and it must be through court just like all the other marriages mm -hmm. for starters we have five types of marriages recognized under the marriage five act. types of five types of marriages under the marriage act 2014 the first is what we call the Christian marriages, mm -hmm. which is what we know uh, uh, and, and is widespread in Kenya, mm -hmm. whereby you go to church, there's a church minister uh, who, who is actually licensed, mm -hmm. and the, the marriage takes place in, in a church setup. Okay. We have a civil marriage whereby you go to the ages and mm. you actually have your marriage there. The it is officiated. One, it's <laughs> the quickest one. Okay? Mm -hmm. it, it's always... A, Within a very few, uh, very, within and an hour, you're done, and your husband and wife, husband and wife, and you have completed their certificate. Mm -hmm. Then we have the customary marriage, which I've told you about. We have the Hindu marriage, um, uh, which is akin to what uh, their religion prescribes. Mm -hmm. The same would apply to Islamic Islam, marriages. Okay. So that the divorce process would also then majorly mm -hmm. be determined by by which type of marriage ah, that you, you oh, actually okay. contracted. Okay. So that you find that mostly in terms of the, the Christian marriages, civil marriages, and to an extent the uh, customary marriages, mm -hmm. you'll actually have to petition the court. Mm -hmm. When you're petitioning the court, uh, you as a, as a spouse that wants out... Let me hold you there. So if I want to divorce my wife today, I petition the court? You must petition. Okay. You, it is not an issue of uh, deciding it in the, uh, in the bedroom or uh, <laughs> as you, one is leaving, going to work. Mm -hmm. it, it is actually a formal process. No, no, no. That one is not a divorce. <laughs> That, that one is what <laughs> now the Marriage Act has tried to indicate, uh, to, to give room to in terms of what it calls separation. Mm -hmm. So that you can even agree to separate, mm -hmm. uh, which is the reality. The Marriage Act has actually tried to move towards the reality. Mm -hmm. But for you to say that I am divorced, yeah. there, it must be through a court process mm -hmm. whereby you will petition the court and even the grounds for petitioning the court are limited mm -hmm. or restricted depending on the type of marriage you contracted. Okay. Uh, the, for the Christian and to an extent the civil uh, marriage and the uh, customary marriages, yeah. you'll find that uh, adultery, mm -hmm. cruelty which may be real or even uh, constructive mm -hmm. because uh, in terms of how you are treating someone, in terms of the way you are talking to someone who's rude journey, Could that be can be cruelty. Cruelty. Mm -hmm. and, and it is actually taken as such by mm -hmm. the courts. You'll actually find that the courts will actually look at um, desertion. Mm -hmm. Whereby you decide to desert, as I've had uh, Jane say, mm -hmm. once someone has deserted for quite a, a, a period of time, especially the law prescribes two years. Okay. Uh, if you are talking about a civil union or a Christian union. You can even find that when you are jailed for more than seven years, yeah. that alone is a ground for divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, or to an extent, if the, you, you are actually found to be uh, insane, mm -hmm. oh, okay. to an extent, that can be a ground of divorce. Okay. So to that extent, if you look at all these grounds of divorce, yeah. you find that you will petition the court. You, the one who is aggrieved. You cannot be the one who has committed adultery mm -hmm. and you are the, the same person petitioning. now petitioning that, <laughs> yes, there is adultery in this. So it must be the... Uh, the, the aggrieved party mm -hmm. that petitions the court, you file a petition to court together with a notice, that petition will be served upon now your spouse. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, this happens mostly when even people you find sometimes they still live together yeah. and you find that it creates you a think that you, need yes, serve. you are being served by even maybe a, a process server. And I'm like, why didn't you just ask me? Why didn't you just ask me? <laughs> and the reason for that is unfortunately yeah. something that our, our laws have not lived up to. Mm -hmm. In the UK, in the US and many other outside jurisdictions, yeah. The divorce process is called a no-fault process, mm -hmm. whereby you can actually consent. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. you can decide uh, uh, this thing is not working. Mm -hmm. Let us consent. And that's why you hear people So you're saying our papers. system is fault-based. Our system you is fault-based. fault on the other side of the party. Very true. And that's, that's where the problem comes in because let me just bring in Jenny. Jenny, that's where the problem comes in because it, it, it then means that you have to prove beyond reasonable doubt that this person either one committed adultery or uh, cruelty and all that. And for some people, that means it's some sort of a mudslinging and, you know, uh, what you would say, uh, um, you know, um, you putting your dirty linen in public. Yeah, uh, I really love what uh, uh, Duncan has uh, spoken about. Yeah. And one thing that I really, to, uh, I really want to emphasize and just bring it out that is uh, not commonly spoken about mm -hmm. is about uh, the issue of ca uh, customary married, mm -hmm. uh, marriage. Many people who uh, went through that process, they assume they can just walk out and uh, uh, that is it. But I love the thing that he has pointed out. Uh, uh, customary marriage is also recognized uh, in the law mm -hmm. and you ought to dissolve it in the legal way by going to court. And I would like to mention uh, personally, I went through, uh, through uh, the, uh, the court, I moved the court that I wanted my marriage to be dissolved while it was customary that we had uh, uh, been married uh, for that long and we had uh, done all the rights and the, the cultural uh, things that needed to be done. Yeah. And this is even to speak to many uh, people out there who assume if you did not marry in church, you can just walk, you know, uh, you, you can just walk out with your kids and that is done. Yeah. But you still tied to that person as a wife. Mm -hmm. So you need to go back to court and just have that marriage uh, uh, dissolve. Mm -hmm. And uh, personally, when I was there, for uh, there's one thing that uh, I learned uh, since I've been in court, I think, for long, and there are things that I came to learn. Now, through uh, customary uh, marriage, you need first to prove that there was a marriage. You need to go through a process of proof, uh, 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 proving that there was a marriage before mm -hmm. it, it's finally uh, dissolved. Mm -hmm. And this is also by, uh, like I'm giving my example, by involving, you know, uh, those elders who received the, you know, the, the, uh, the dowry, the people who att attended your, your, your ceremony. Mm -hmm. Any uh, pictures that you took, you know, evidence, having evidence that for sure this thing happened. Mm -hmm. And so, it, maybe they can hold you there. It, it's, it's a bit hectic then because you, you're going through a process. Maybe this is someone you've already separated with. You don't want to see them. You don't want to be involved with them. But the entire process itself means you have to either interact with this person, meet their family every day, and a very long process that both of you have to work together. Yeah, this is where now uh, you have to like uh, involve our lawyers because at that point you're not even seeing each other mm -hmm. eye to eye. Mm -hmm. And for sure you might even, I, I think, do uh, bad things to one another. So you involve uh, through the, communi uh, the, the communication, you involve a lawyer. And maybe to my case, I can also mention that even it went a step further. Before even we dissolve our marriage, I learned that... Uh, uh, the person had gone ahead and married somebody else through the AG chambers without dissolving my marriage. Mm -hmm. So we had another case now of uh, 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 bigamy mm -hmm. that now uh, through the, the, the state lawyers, they assisted me like this person came, lied that he's not married and he got uh, married to this person. So we had now to have another uh, case going on mm -hmm. of now... Uh, uh, of now taking through the thing of that he, he has committed bigamy since he has not dissolved his his first marriage and yeah. he has gone to another uh another marriage mm -hmm. and for sure it's not easy during that uh, that time because even at one point we had even to uh to travel with some cids to my in-laws to record statements you know mm -hmm. do you know this person did did you ever go to their home mm -hmm. so even cids were involved since they they needed to put uh together uh the information and their findings so that it can be presented to court okay yeah. all right dan do you want to just um contribute briefly um Remember, it takes two people to come together to agree we want to marry. Yeah. So by the time you're bringing in other uh, players, uh, they can only do so much. Mm -hmm. uh, I say this because uh, uh, when, w first of all, when you are when you are deciding to marry, you are introducing each other to your parents, your friends, etc. Yeah. Uh, there are those who will you'll hear lots of things, mm -hmm. but by the time you decide this is the person I want to settle with, yeah, it is a unilateral decision. Mm -hmm. 
nobody's holding a gun and uh, you know forcing uh, two people to come together yeah and so when sometimes we uh, come back and uh, blame society blame the church mm -hmm. this uh, situation again the the, the 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 question is thrown back to us was the church involved when you were uh, getting married mm -hmm. you only gave uh, you came to seek uh, you know consent mm -hmm. and uh, to officiate on and solemnize your your union mm -hmm. Uh, the church has no obligation to force you again uh, to do certain things or to agree. Neither can the court do that. The court will only follow due process yeah. and uh, try as much as possible in arbitration. Okay. The church will also do its part and okay. try as much as possible to arbitrate. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, what that then does is uh, 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 you, you start to isolate issues. Mm -hmm. How, where do you bring in uh, elders, where do you bring in family, where do you bring in court? Mm -hmm. But court is now mandatory because once the petition has moved to court, yeah. you are obliged to, to, to appear in court, mm -hmm. in person. And uh, it, it gets very ugly mm -hmm. uh, at times. Yeah. Uh, if you don't agree, of course, uh, people don't cooperate usually. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can get very ugly when people need to dig out stuff. Okay. You, you, you know, it, it, it's not a very interesting process. Like I've had the learned friend say, mm -hmm. you are obliged to answer to each and every uh, account. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dan, Dan, let me just hold you there. Before I take this qu quick break, uh, Dan, can you just 30 seconds without sharing personal details? What's the most chaotic or messy one uh, case you you presided over <laughs> uh, any any divorce lawyer will tell you uh, after one year of practice definitely you'll have one or two mm -hmm. i know there's uh, one that uh, the, the couples actually fought in court mm -hmm. in my presence and it was very hard because the magistrate uh, was actually also unable to control. Mm -hmm. So it was up to us, the advocates, to deal with. I know there is one which is uh, ongoing currently, which has attracted a lot of social debate yeah. um, and such. So it, it is expected. The divorce is as messy as they come, mm -hmm. uh, while marriages are as rosy as they come. Okay. So marriages are, are as rosy as they come, but divorces are as messy as they come. And part of that mess in divorce is the issue of what happens after we divorce, who takes child custody, and who takes what in terms of the property that we accumulated during our marriage. That's what we will be discuss after this quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Weka Shell Shinda Fuso FI is back and bigger. Weka Kolabo na Shell Fuels plus Shell Lubricants Africa's Osho Pata Convenience Shop. To enter the draw, dial star 384 star 200 hash, enter the code from your voucher and follow the prompts. Terms and conditions apply. Kijani Ridge is Tatu City's premier neighborhood, offering a quarter and a half acre fully serviced plot in a controlled development. The plots overlook a beautiful dam with natural green spaces. Kijani Ridge is a walking distance from Hoover Pioneer and Crawford International Schools. Families are already moved in and more homes are under construction. 
Contact us for daily site visits and own your dream home with us. For decades, Africa has been importing 99% of all its vaccines. Now the continent's leaders want to bring manufacturing home. We've invented a same device for the visually impaired. It's called Yelunkora, which means the new light. There's a lot of garbage scattered all over. It's a recurring problem. On the other hand, the Ivory Coast is an agricultural state. Fertilizer is a growing market in Côte d'Ivoire. Zembeed posting up. He's got Bogdanovich thinking about a three. There it is. Yes! Wow! Jordan back in against Embiid. He just three of ten from the field. Fakes, drives. There's a high percentage shot. Had that post up. Yep. And Harris there was Ooh. surrounded by Minnesota Timberwolves. As Embiid, you can... Seeing a lot of runouts early here by Sixer Mixed Cues. Oh, Embiid emphatically slamming in the face of Wagner and the foul as well. This is kind of like walking out of the batter's box a little bit. Same thing here. You kind of sit. Whoop. Up. <laughs> uh, all bets are over now. Joel is unleashed. You got a guy like Allen who can make catches in deep. Take him. Embiid indeed. Slamming for two of his 27. The 19th time in his NBA career, he's had 20 or more in the first half. And Embiid leaving the Pistons in denial. Wow. Robinson goes to a two and met by Embiid, who's done it all tonight. <laughs> yeah, three in the morning. <laughs> yes, I mean, people are always talking about how much they love, or is it they spend so much time there. That's what it is. A gorgeous move and finished by Embiid. So Joel, after the 0 for 6, his last four, Ananobi meeting up with Embiid. Good extra pass, and Joel somehow blocking the shot of Baines. Thank you for staying with us on your world this morning. We are talking about something very important in our society today that is marriage and divorce. It's a conversation that no one really wants to talk about it, but we have to talk about it because it affects us. And of course, Duncan Okach is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, is with me in studio this morning. Jenny Washira, the founder of Sadrev Africa, is also with me. Uh, and so is Daniel Were, he's a civic educator and evangelist in, uh, with us in studio. And joining us uh, virtually this morning is Frederick Osoro, a counseling uh, psychologist. And, and let me just pick it up from, from where we left it, Duncan. And, and, and two things that we tend to forget about divorce is the process and how long it can take. And with it comes the issue of costs. Very true. Uh, as I was indicating, the process is, is quite litigious uh, because you cannot even consent to it. And the moment the court senses that you are consenting to it, then that's the end of that particular process. What, what do you mean by consenting? So that you cannot go there and say, we have even agreed to come here to, to file this divorce petition. Wait. Okay. Yes. You can, in, in fact, in your pleadings, that must come out very clearly that both of you have not act actually connived or agreed to actually uh, petition this court. So that what happens is that you will petition the court, serve the other party. The other party, if it thinks that, yes, also uh, divorce is right, will file its, his or her own cross petition. Mm -hmm. But the moment you actually go there as if you've discussed, let us come and file this divorce, no. Okay, let me, let me hold you there on behalf of the people watching this conversation. Because Duncan, I mean, 
as you mentioned earlier, it's a very messy affair, and Jenny said it involves mud slinging. You know, you did this, yes. I didn't do this. I mean, the ideal situation, for, at least from where you sit as a layman, would be that, I mean, we agree that this thing cannot work. We just tell the court to help us separate uh, from each other. Indeed, that is the logical position, and I do agree with you, and that's why I say that I think the law needs to move a step further mm -hmm. uh, to a point where you make the divorce a bit uh, easier for parties and less messy. Mm -hmm. And that is where I've told you the UK, the US, and other uh, developed countries are. Mm -hmm. However, in Kenya, and even when we actually um, uh, brought in the Marriage Act, instead of adopting that, we still have this as a fundamental aspect whereby the principle of divorce is that the marriage must be irretrievably broken down. Mm -hmm. And that is the threshold by which any judicial officer must satisfy themselves based on the evidence that you've brought. Okay. It is akin to saying, if you come to court and all you are saying is that, yes, we want our marriage uh, uh, dissolved, yeah. the court will not agree with you. It's akin to saying there must be drama. Mm -hmm. There must be all these wild allegations, which is what makes it more messy here, mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, in a broad And that can be tragic for a process that it's for people who have already gone through enough. And that makes it even more expensive, because for you to demonstrate all this, you will need to do pleadings in terms of the petitions. Mm -hmm. A lay person may not do the proper pleadings, yeah. so that you'll need the services of a lawyer. The moment that happens, for you to also demonstrate and, and meet the threshold that is required by law to ensure that the magistrate or the judge understand that this marriage is irretrievably broken down, you'll need the services of a lawyer to take you through. Mm -hmm. That is, comes with a cost. But if you look at, you juxtapose it with what happens in other jurisdictions, it is just you and, 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 and your wife agreeing that this marriage is... Uh, has reached a point where we cannot proceed, the Bill Gates way. Mm -hmm. And all you need to do is to sign those papers. The moment those papers are signed, yeah. they are presented in court, and that's it. That mm -hmm. is your divorce. Okay. So we, that's a point where we need to look into it to, to ensure that divorces are not as messy as, as, as uh, they are or as the law now uh, mandates. But you must also know that there is a difference between divorce and annulment of our marriage. Okay. Because most people... Uh, have or confuse those two terms. Mm -hmm. uh, annulment of a marriage is always done within one year and generally once a marriage is annulled, it is akin to saying that the marriage never happened. You are never married. So what, what is to annul in this sense? To annul is like to cancel out the, 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 the entire process. Atujoikwa na wewe. In fact, you remain now a bachelor per se. You know, once mm -hmm. you're divorced, your documents will say, I'm a divorcee. Mm -hmm. It cannot say that you are a bachelor. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as to an extent that I've had... Uh, Dan say he's a senior bachelor. Uh -huh. That cannot apply <laughs> if indeed you've gone through divorce. Yeah. But if you annul that marriage, and there are grounds to, for annulling that marriage, if it, it was forced, if someone was married and they were not even present, if, uh, if indeed the, if that marriage was not even consummated, yeah. there are those grounds that actually come to actually indi indicate that you don't go for divorce, you actually go for annulment. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, the process is still a legal process. Okay, maybe Duncan and Jenny can just respond briefly, uh, each of you, to, to uh, the conversation we're having with Duncan. Okay, maybe I... Start, Jenny. I, yes, uh, I can start. Yeah, uh, the legal process, it's very, very draining. Mm -hmm. uh, and first, I agree, you're already going through an emotional turmoil. So can you imagine adding something else? Mm -hmm. And that is the legal process, which is also uh, financially uh, draining. And uh, like personally, I know I was in courts for roughly six years because of the back and forth. Six years? Yes, because of the uh, both now. And that comes with costs? It comes with cost and time mm -hmm. and also uh, your emotion. Yes, yes, yeah, they're all involved there. Yeah? And that's both now the, the children, uh, custody, maintenance, the whole thing, you know, because now there was uh, a lot that we did not agree yeah. on. So it was an issue of back and forth. You know, you, you file this, I file something else. You do mm -hmm. this, I do something else, you mm -hmm. know. So I was there for long. And for sure, uh, what I can say, I think uh, uh, courts can be very, very frustrating. And personally, okay, I'm not trying to deny uh, Duncan and, uh, and the colleagues' work. 
uh, to a point I couldn't even have any <laughs> lawyer. I had to uh, to go through the process about to personally represent myself mm -hmm. because initially it was just too much that I couldn't even afford uh, to pay a lawyer anymore. Mm -hmm. Or rather, even the few who are there, they were already tired because the matter took too long. Mm -hmm. So they. Um, they like opted out. So I and had you become, to get... you become that couple, ile, wanakujanga kuzushia na kila siku hapa. Yes, yes. No, unajulikana zile za drama. You know, like, mm -hmm. once you see, even the, the magistrate knows that they have come again. <laughs> they are here, you know? Yeah. So it was just uh, that process that I would really do not wish even my enemy. It was really bad. It uh, even affecting the, the, the kids as you get even to uh, 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 children. Because to some point, even they, were, it, they had to come to court, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, be, uh, just go to, uh, to about the issue of custody and uh, maintenance, they had to be there. So you can imagine through that process even what you are taking your kids through. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a very tiring, tiring, tiring process. Mm -hmm. It's a process that uh, uh, if there's another uh, option that you can do other than going there, I would rather, if there's an agreement, uh, something that you can agree at the side or just have an arrangement that you can do at the side, maybe in the presence of, uh, of a mediator or something, yeah. uh, it's better other than uh, just going through that process. Okay, Dan, would you go, would you take a shorter, less messier route if it was available, briefly? Oh yeah, uh, thankfully my case was not messy. Yeah. Of course there were 29 counts to, or petitions rather, to, to respond to. 29? Yes, and uh, there uh, was required evidence for that. But what happened, uh, I went through the High Court, and uh, I, I must really commend the, 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 uh, the, the process I, 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 I encountered because the Lady Justice was uh, quite uh, humane. And at some point even she said uh, she, 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 she ruled she didn't want anybody else other than ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so we, she could hold brief for us even in her chambers. She really tried her best for the two years to try because uh, after all evidence was adduced, yeah. Uh, it was uh, not valid, according to her and according to the evidences that were presented mm -hmm. uh, from both of us. So it was just a matter of a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. And so by the time the court ruled that uh, it was irreconcilable differences, we all had agreed that uh, uh, one party really wanted to be out. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you can't force an adult who's really made up their mind to, to move on. Mm -hmm. So mine was not really messy, but while I was waiting to, uh, for, for, for my turn in court, yeah. I could see, I, you know, you, people are coming there, they had, you know, cases presented and you, it is really, uh, it's not good the way uh, uh, they, 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 they do. Mm -hmm. I, I felt, because that was my first time ever in court, yeah. and I thought you have your turn and then it's in uh, uh, closed doors mm -hmm. so that people are not uh, witnessing all this uh, drama. And then you realize it's public. Then you realize it is public. And uh, it, it gets, it, I didn't, it took me time to really just um, uh, get over some of the things that I saw, even if they didn't involve myself. Yeah, okay. And yes. that, maybe I can bring in uh, Fred at this point. F Fred, I w another area that we often don't talk about is the emotional, the mental strain that comes with all these uh, this processes. Yes. Yeah, uh, imagine uh, from uh, what has been discussed by Daniel, uh, Duncan, and uh, also here, Jen, yeah. I'm realizing that... Um, also, the process is long, eh? the process of divorce itself. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, there are so many other psychological issues uh, uh, that depress them too much uh, for them to reach to that point mm -hmm. of divorce uh, before a person thinks about uh, a divorce. They must have gone through a number of issues. Most of the issues that commonly are represented by these people is um, they say, uh, contempt that uh, this person does not respect me, mm -hmm. this person does not uh, even remember what I have done, how much I have contributed to this marriage. Mm -hmm. You can hear that they feel like uh, they are disrespected. And um, to a point a person is feeling that, then it means there is a pile of issues and uh, so many other 
uh, circumstances. Eh? There mm -hmm. are so many act actions that have taken place, and this person has been piling them up. Mm -hmm. And uh, another one is criticism. In fact, the criticism is very dangerous, um, mostly when uh, they are criticized of maybe their self-image, their body image, how they look like. Mm -hmm. Maybe when uh, the marriage was beginning, this person was beautiful, was handsome. Maybe this person has been disabled or has a medical condition. Or maybe the appearance has changed, mm -hmm. uh, uh, changed. And then uh, you find that uh, there is that criticism of how maybe they do things. Maybe expectations have changed. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe one, one partner thought that um, uh, expected this person to be happy in this way or to be in a certain way, to mm -hmm. be a certain kind of a person. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is a picture a person had painted in their own heart mm -hmm. of a person they wanted. Uh, and uh, through that attraction. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Maybe that expectation is not met okay. very well. So, you, uh, most of the issues are uh, end up in stress mm -hmm. and a lot of anxiety. And uh, if uh, we, are, we assess this person, we find that uh, they are so much uh, depressed. The okay. level of sadness is high, so that they become even violent. And uh, that level of sadness is what is producing some of the responses. The responses are not very direct. Mm -hmm. They are like uh, defensive responses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Fred. And, and maybe to, just to come back to you, Duncan, then, um, because the two of the most contentious issues, and I think uh, Jenny has already touched on one of them, the issue of the children. So we have gone to court. We have petitioned. We have proved that indeed uh, there is what you would call from a legal ground irretrievable. Uh, what Bro the marriage has irretrievably broken down. Yes, and the irreconcilable differences. In irreconcilable differences. Yeah. So we need to part ways. But there are two things: one, property; number two, the children. Who takes what? Indeed, that's a, that's a very pertinent question, and. Uh, it's one of the reasons most of these divorce proceedings became even more messier and uh, they took even longer. Mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, uh, previously you, you, you dealt with all these issues at once. Mm -hmm. But moving forward, it was, uh, it, it was found to be prudent to separate all these three issues. Okay. So that once you petition for divorce, you are only dealing with the issue of this union Mm -hmm. uh, in isolation of these other issues. The only thing you can maybe talk about is alimony yeah. in terms of support for uh, the, the, the spouse who was being supported. Mm -hmm. But moving forward, we have the children's court, mm -hmm. which deals with issues children. Whether it So is you, we deal with our divorce in court A and go to court B for the children? The issues about the children are dealt with under the uh, uh, in the children's court. Okay. And that is a court that is mandated by law to deal with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it has been greatly empowered uh, by the judiciary so that um, it is not only dealing with children's matters under circumstances where there are is a separation or a divorce or a divorce process ongoing. Mm -hmm. Even when you're married and there is an issue because uh, responsibility for children under Article 53 is shared, it's for both parents. Okay. Uh, so that if someone does not take up their responsibility, this children court will actually deal with that. Mm -hmm. So that on issues of the upkeep, how the children, uh, the, the, the basic needs of the children, you actually uh, file your, your, your petition in the children's court. The moment you take this matter to the children's court, the children's court will actually deal. The, the, the basis there is the best interest of the child okay. as opposed to both of you. But the expectation sometimes is that the mother will become the aut automatic custodian. Indeed, the, the rule of the thumb is that, uh, and looking at the best interest of children, is that the children of tender years yeah are best with the mother mm -hmm. that and, and and that there are so many reasons uh, for that which we, uh, i may not even even uh, have enough time to elucidate yeah however uh, there are circumstances which the court can even rule uh, and decide that the father stays with these particular children which circumstances means? where you find that the mother is um is, is not responsible. Let's say the mother is a drunkard, too much of a drunkard, mm -hmm. does not care for these children. Let's say where the mother is extremely violent to these particular children, mm -hmm. or where the mother has been adjudged insane to that extent. But those are now 
the, the exceptions. The rule of the thumb is that children of tender years stay with the mother. And the courts have not shied away from enforcing that because mm -hmm. that is in line with the best interest of the children. But when it comes to issues of property, that is where now... The, the Actually, we'll, we'll just come back to the issue of property. But, but yeah. let me stay with the issue of the children. Do the children get maybe to say who I want to stay with? I, I, indeed, um, the children ca can, ca can, can be interviewed by the court, but that their view alone uh, d does not uh, determine who they stay with. You've, you'll understand that sometimes the children have stayed with the mother and the father has the right to access these children. Mm -hmm. So that uh, because of the situation between the parents, children can even be poisoned. Mm -hmm. They can be told this person, that your father is, will do this A, B, C, D to you. So that if you just go by the view of the child at that particular point, it may be influenced by other by extre extraneous circumstances. Mm -hmm. However, the father has the right to, to access these children, mm -hmm. to have the children. Because uh, sometimes we just see, view the father as, you know, a breadwinner and not necessarily a primary caregiver. Uh, th that, that comes mainly from uh, our traditional setup mm -hmm. be because uh, we come from a patriarchal uh, setup Society. whereby the father is the head of the house, is the provider of, uh, for that particular unit. But in terms of the primary caregiver is actually the mother. The mother will breastfeed this child. Mm -hmm. In any case, the mother is the one who has carried this child for nine months. The mother is the one who will deal with this particular child from when they are tender uh, and, and as they are growing up. Mm -hmm. Majorly, we come from a society where we believe the mother is always supposed to have been at home mm -hmm. taking care of these children when the fathers go to hunt, go to get food. So that is what maybe may inform that. But the reality of the day mm -hmm. is that when there is especially a sepa there is separation or divorce, yeah. then the father must equally be given the, the chance to also have uh, access to these children if the children are able to be taken to where the father is or the father is able to stay with the children for some time. It is. And majorly you find that the courts give a fortnight access to, to the fathers and maybe shared uh, uh, holiday periods mm -hmm. uh, to the fathers, and, and, and the same the will apply. Co-parenting, yes, co-parenting. The mm -hmm. same will apply if the uh, the court, for one reason or another, says that these children will actually the father will have actual custody of these children. Mm -hmm. It means that the mother will, on the other side, also have the same rights of access mm -hmm. uh, to enable co-parenting and and to enable these children to at least have a better feel of both sides. Okay, and unfortunately this issue of co-parenting brings in more problems that you <laughs> thought you, you had dealt with, yes. uh, of course, with the divorce. Let me just bring it. Jenny, how easy or hard was it for you? How did you solve the issue of who takes custody of the children? Well, just to mention first, I think the issue of uh, co-parenting is uh, a bit complicated, Yeah. especially since this person now, uh, you are no longer, you're not with him, but because of that, you need to keep on talking and uh, maybe keep on seeing. And this is uh, someone you don't want to necessarily want, see. Exactly, yes. So you just have to have those conversations with calling or seeing each other as you drop or as they pick. Mm -hmm. So this, as I said, this is something that uh, it's very difficult to bring it to a close because mm -hmm. this person will always show up uh, in your lives. Mm -hmm. And what I can um, mention in that uh, particular thing, for me, I think uh, the children uh, case was uh, more complicated. Yeah, because we all wanted, or uh, just uh, assumed that to, to, to keep the children. Mm -hmm. So there was sort of, uh, you know, a push and pull, you know, you're coming, you're saying this, and, the, and uh, he's coming and saying something else. But this time, I think when he moved out, as I mentioned, yeah. I, and I was in a position, uh, and uh, just to... Uh, go back to what the the, uh, the, the counselor said yeah. that uh, I totally lost my, myself for around two years. I s lost my sanity. You know, like I couldn't work. I couldn't do anything. I I, I was in another world. I didn't know exactly yes. where I was. You know, mm -hmm. and some point even I did not even have an income. And it got to this point, the uh, children had to go to school. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this is where maybe I would really want to address maybe and mostly the fathers because once they. Uh,
gentlemen, now uh, we went through the, the process and I mentioned even about the, the custody, the children had to be brought to court. They had to be in interviewed by the magistrate mm -hmm. for them to, uh, to say who they, they would want to stay with. You know, it involved even the kids, which was really heartbreaking, just seeing them going through that. You know, okay. they are here, they, they are, they, the father is there, they love their father, they love their mother, but they have to be, to be put like in an awkward position. Yes, they have to be put in an awkward uh, 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 position to take sides, you know. And for sure is one thing that I would really even want to advise parents, I think it's just not good to take children uh, through this because we can see the effect up to now. However much they are, they are grown, they are growing, you can see the effect of that up to now. Okay. Dan, Dan, for, for you, you, you might want to separate, but the children, the parents want to separate, but for, for the children, they, they don't want you to separate. They want you to stay as one. Um, in my case, I didn't have any children. Yeah. So uh, it, it was just uh, bye-byes. Yeah. And uh, uh, that is it. But of course, there is so much you have built together in uh, 11 years. It's not a to short just time. Just throw it away. Yeah, so you have uh, an identity. It's actually an identity you are dealing with. People know you, associate with you, you have built friendships, you mm -hmm. have built um, solid ground. Uh, what I keep calling my social capital, you know, friends who know you. So you are basically walking away from all that. Eh? Yeah. So that is a, a part and parcel of the, 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 the grieving that now comes after that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you want to look around your house and uh, everything, you know, has a touch of the of two the of the person. You. Yes. So getting rid of that over time, you know, it, it's been 14 years for me. And it's not until just maybe uh, uh, 2018 is when uh, I thought I needed help. And so I started walking this path of uh, receiving uh, uh, psychological help, mm -hmm. emotional uh, support, and I, I, I enrolled into a counseling class yeah. just ostensibly to help me, you know, uh, now navigate through. Because, uh, you, you know, you, you, you carry, uh, the learned friend has said uh, it's a label, you are a divorcee, mm -hmm. you are not single. It becomes your tag you walk around it's with. It's a tag that. you walk around with. <laughs> And it's not, a, it's not a nice tag. I don't like it. And uh, people call you that. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, it sticks. And, and this is, you see, the, the, the uh, marriage is God-ordained. Yeah. Once you've walked into it, that is it. Mm -hmm. And I meet people today, uh, charismatics, who will tell you, you know, you are, you, you are, you are, you are married, even in, re in heaven. That is the record. Mm -hmm. So you can't remarry. You are married. And so you, you find that um, you are navigating between a rock yeah. and a hard place. Okay. They tell you you cannot do that. Uh, you cannot receive Holy Communion in some places. Yeah. You ca uh, basically, you are grounded. Okay. That's what they are saying. You had your cake. Yeah. You ate it. Uh, so you stay put and wait for death. So the only thing you do, and uh, that is the biblical principle, yeah. is that you can only reconcile. Or wait until one of you dies, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, 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 the other can now think about marriage. Okay. And, and maybe just before I take this quick break, briefly, Fred, if it's not easy for the parents, it's definitely not mm -hmm. easy for the children who are at this point most likely be at a very tender age. No. It can never be easy. Yeah. Yes, it's Fred who's responding. Uh, Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah, Fred. Thank you very much. I can agree that uh, children are the most affected yeah. and the most forgotten in this whole process. And uh, their effect uh, also is worse depending on their age. The younger the child, the more the effect because it will be a, a long-term effect. Mm -hmm. They will process it slowly. For example, those who are uh, below 11 years, they may, it may not make sense at that point, but you see that issue is in their mind, in their unconscious for some time. When uh, they will keep on uh, uh, putting uh, all these issues together, and therefore at the age of 13, that's where you find most of them having separation anxiety. Mm -hmm. That is presenting itself. Uh, differently in a way that uh, it cannot be easily detected. We have had issues of children fainting 
in schools, even during this time of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So you find when you are trying to check and to find whether COVID-19 is contributing, you find it still there are some issues of separation, a parent is not near them, the issues of homosexuality also come. In fact, most of the cases of homosexuality, uh, whereby this, um, uh, mostly at adolescent stages, whereby it is uh, evident when they claim to be having mixed feelings, when you are trying to check, you find that at some point there are some issues. Most of them who come from uh, uh, the family whereby dissolution of marriage happens, yeah. you find that uh, maybe there is a problem in communication or getting into contact with a parent. Okay. So this situation affected them a lot because there is that need, uh, the love and belonging need. All right. Some of them end up like now boys, they want to know who is my father. Yeah. Okay. I, I think we're losing Fred, but yes, we have to go for a very quick break, but don't go anywhere because of course, Jenny, Dan, Duncan and Fred are staying with me. When we come back, what happens to the plots, to the shambas, to the houses that you acquired jointly? What happens when you decide to separate after this break? Hi, my name is DJ Protégé, aka The Life of the Party. I've been in Sima Circle for the last seven or eight years. It's a true definition of growing with your partner. Well, I've taken up the loan facility as well as the saving facility. So I have a monthly contribution and also bought shares in, in the circle. I started off slowly with small money, but now my savings have really grown. So it has really opened so many doors for me. As you can see, I bought equipment with it. Um, it's helped me a lot in terms of paying for school fees. So the one thing I can tell people out there is that Sima Sako, with them, it's true to what they say. Anyone else out there who's expecting to actually have their money offered for them, to actually try out Sima Sako. We are Stima Sako, a true reflection of you. The Kenya Film Commission is glad to announce the fourth edition of My Kenya My Story Mobile Phone Film Competition. Join us on the 18th of June as we announce the winner of the fourth edition of My Kenya My Story. Kenya Film Commission. Film Kenya, capture Africa. Fresh Fry Ginger has ginger oil, which is good for a healthy living lifestyle. It combines wonderfully on salads, stir fries, when basted on roasted meat, or simply sprinkled on your favorite dish. Now available in 250 ml, 500 ml, and 1 liter. Most of us women, we are marginalized because we don't have uh, assets. I only had 100,000 shillings from uh, Chamaz, eh? the merry-go-round. That's how I began my story. I felt the market was started opening for me. There were, the customers started coming in large numbers. You have to have the daily ledger. You have to have a balance sheet or you can have a, a, an income and an expenditure account which explains how you, are, you make your, your, your losses or your profits. Ni swala ambalo limetatiza mafisi wengi. Huenda ikawa anaepiga simu anataka kukula fea Ama msupa amejipa kiro safi Nduru za kuaminika zimetufikia ya kwamba 
To get more Hama Fisi, dial star 811 star 935 hash. Skiza na nation. Thank you for staying with your world on NTV this morning. We are talking about marriage and divorce. And at this point, we want to talk about yet another controversial aspect uh, of separation and divorce, which is the issue of property, and that is matrimonial property. So you are living in this house, but when it's time to part ways, definitely each one of you goes different directions. So what happens to the house that you build together? What happens to the farm that you bought together and the business that you, you know, co-share? What happens? That's what we want to ask my guest this morning, especially Duncan. Yeah. We live in this house. We didn't take records of, uh, you know, who contributed what and who did not contribute. So it's time to part ways. Who takes the house? Uh, uh, that, that, that's a very important aspect in, in a separation procedure. But as I answer that, let me just, within a second, just yes. uh, weigh in on something that Jane said. Yeah. Uh, that I personally also do not appreciate when children are brought to court and told to choose. Mm -hmm. Because I know two years ago, there is a child who committed suicide and left a suicide note oh. and said, because you are fighting over me and I have to choose, I don't want to choose either. Oh, so the child ended up committing suicide. The magistrate was devastated. The parents were devastated. All that. So that's a whole problem by itself. Mm -hmm. But going forward in terms of the issue of property, property. Uh, we have enacted the Matrimonial Property uh, Causes Act, which actually help us in dealing now separately with the issue of property. Mm -hmm. Previously, as I told you, all these were jungled up together, mm -hmm. and it procrastinated that process and made it so bad. But now we uh, the, 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 uh, the law has moved ahead and dealt with the issue of matrimonial properties separately, whereby you file a separate case in court, in the high court, and it deals with that. Mm -hmm. I've told you uh, marriages are rosy, uh, divorce uh, are messy, but now when it comes to property, it is chaotic, mm -hmm. as chaotic as they come. And it is chaotic because uh, even the law itself is not settled. Yeah. Indeed, uh, Article uh, 40, 45 is very clear that uh, you are equal while you're joining the marriage, yeah. during the marriage, and at the point of separation. Mm -hmm. So that the rule of the thumb should be 50-50. Uh, mm -hmm. That is the presumption of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, to that extent, the issue is uh, the courts have actually been a bit chaotic on this one because there is an indication that the courts are saying you now need to demonstrate your contribution. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if, if it's surely if Jenny is, is a millionaire, yes. I, I want to, to, to get married and yeah. at a to Kiwachana, I take half of her millions. So th th that is the basis of it. But the rule, the other rule is that whatever property you acquired before the marriage, that is not matrimonial property. Uh -huh. Whatever um, inheri inherited property or property you are getting through the inheritance line, mm -hmm. that is so not matrimonial property. So if I took a Fuliza property. loan before we, we... That is your own debt. That <laughs> one can, cannot be bought. <laughs> but anything that has been acquired during the substances of the marriage, yeah. that is what we define as matrimonial property. And to that particular extent, the indication, as you are seeing, should be half-half if you look at the Constitution, if you look at even the Maputo Protocol and all that. Mm -hmm. However, the reality on the ground in terms of judicial pronouncements, it has, it, it has been as chaotic as, as they come. Because some judges have actually moved and said it is 50-50 within the high court itself. Yeah. Within the same high court, some have said, no, you must demonstrate contribution. Within the same high court itself, contribution can actually is not actually monetary, direct. Mm -hmm. It is actually in terms of how you've been taking care of these particular children, you've been taking care of the house, you may have been the one budgeting and all that. So that is still a contribution. Some high court judges have even said that must be quantified. 
we do not have a quantifier or, 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 or a basis of quantifying all this that is standardized across the country. Mm -hmm. Whereby I can say that because this lady was taking care of these children, raising them and all that, the, 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 the percentage contribution is 30%. Mm -hmm. So now you find... Because quotes, it tends to be unfair to women. Because, I mean, Duncan, if, if my, my wife and I are building a house and we decide, okay, as the man, let me take the bigger role of, 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 of uh, putting up this house. But sometimes you find out that I was able to put up this house because my wife was taking care of the basic responsibilities, which means she has a contribution in this house becoming a uh, whole. That is actually the case uh, in, in, in a famous case, Kivuitu versus Kivuitu, whereby used to send money and the wife used to operationalize everything. But when it came to divorce, Kivuitu said it is in my name. And uh, fortunately, uh, the court said that no, it, mm -hmm. this is 50-50. However... Uh, after the Consti after the 2010 constitution, yeah. it was supposed to cement that. But to that extent, it is about quantifying that contribution. Because yes, you may have been doing all this, but what percentage do we attribute to that particular role? Mm -hmm. And to make it even worse, sometimes you find that because we are from a patriarchal society whereby, and even if you look at the, the previous legislation uh, uh, from the UK that we had in 1882, yeah. the, uh, you, you married women's act you find that uh, ideally uh, most of these properties are registered in the name of of the man mm -hmm. so that when it comes to divorce it is in the, it, it is easy to presume that this property belongs to the man mm -hmm. yet maybe even there may be, have been actual contribution from the lady mm -hmm. and to a large extent our society is still like that uh, to that extent you find that it is very hard for a lady to have even receipts to have kept all these receipts over the years to contribute because some judges have said you need to come with documentary evidence mm -hmm. of how you contributed. Mm -hmm. So it has created a lot of chaos. I know uh, FIDA went to court in 2018, tried to challenge Section 6 and 7 of this act as, as, try, as, as being contrary to Article 53, uh, Article 45, but to that extent, it is still not proper. But if you look at the Maputo Protocol yeah. uh, and Convention, it even says that this right is not only about women. Mm -hmm. It is about children. Because ideally, women and children are grouped together. Mm -hmm. And if you look at how the courts have always ruled, children are always with the mother, with the mother especially in terms of housing and all that. So mm -hmm. property is a whole dimension which, unfortunately, and I know our guests, my, my core panelists will also contribute on this, yeah. It is something that still needs to be panel beaten. Even mm -hmm. the courts where you will file this petition, there is still an issue because the, the, the Act says it is a high court. We have expanded the, the, the pecuniary jurisdiction of the magistrate's court. Can we file it there? Mm -hmm. And you know we have backlog of cases yeah. again. Yeah. By the time you are dealing with all these properties, finishing these matters, we've seen matters staying in court for 10 years. Yeah. What is happening on the ground? Yeah. Let me start with, Dan, let me start with you. Yes. Your response to the issue of, of property. Property, yes. Um, uh, in my case, we just agreed eh? mm -hmm. what uh, you know to dispose of and uh, what uh, what else to do. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there was it really a major issue as mm -hmm. such. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to settle it. Uh, in fact, with guidance of our uh, uh, advocates, mm -hmm. we were able to. Uh, cash on out everything properly. So, so there is a way in which this can be a bit more civil. Yes. And it's possible to resolve it uh, unlike the chaos that sometimes we see in court. Exactly. Okay. And I, I know my, my like some of my elders would uh, come and say now, how about dowry? Are you going to claim back your dowry? Mm -hmm. right. So <laughs> you don't want to go there. Yeah. Uh, those are some of the things you overlook. Mm -hmm. There's something you, it's a compromise somehow. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, but for that ag ar arrangement, if you mind, if you ha have no problem with disclosing this, did you maybe uh, go the court way, which is uh, we look at your contribution, or uh, did you go the 50-50 strictly to the last letter, we divide strictly, or did you find your own local arrangement that you thought would be best for you? Fortunately, it didn't come to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just, uh, we just, it was just uh, ruled, and we agreed on our own. What then happened after that? Okay. Jenny. Okay. For me, I can uh, mention, I think, the issue of uh, property 
it was never uh, a problem since we didn't we didn't have much to uh, to fight over mm -hmm. and by the time i think uh, he left uh, in my absence he came with a, a truck and part what he thought it was, was his or yes mm -hmm. which uh, for me i was not ready to pursue that you know you know you picked what or you or you left what mm -hmm. i was like uh, for the sake of peace i just left it at that mm -hmm. even the few pieces of uh, land that was uh, on his name and what was on mine we just opted not by discussion you yeah. just uh, whatever it yours you go with it whatever i feel is mine i just remain so the issue of property for us it just got to that level we didn't take it uh, further mm -hmm. yeah and that is important because sometimes when we decide it's the mother who's staying with the children <laughs> but when it, it comes to division of property and duncan mentioned is that these things are done in in, in two separate sessions in court so one court says, you know, that the child should, children should remain with the mother. And then another court decides, you know what, if we look at the property, it looks like much of the property should be, you know, uh, given to the man who, in this case, does not even have custody of the children, and which means less responsibilities. Okay. Now, uh, maybe to mention uh, uh, something there. Yeah. Uh, huh. Now, because of the children, you find like uh, the custodian, and most uh, in my case, it was now me uh, remaining with the children. Yeah. And uh, I needed to, uh, however much there was an order of what he should uh, do or maintain the children about school fees and all this. Yeah. But uh, you find, and maybe uh, Duncan will correct or uh, will correct me on that. Yeah. Okay. The court gives an order and it tells you, as a mother, do this. Mm -hmm. As a father, do that. You know. Mm -hmm. But it can only go that far because, especially for the uh, for the area of custody and uh, access. You cannot again come back and, and police the man whether did you pick the children this weekend, did you do this, did you do that. Yeah. So we find in, the, in many cases, however much there is uh, an order, uh, well <clears throat> uh, spelled what um, uh, the mother should do and what the father should do, you find in most cases it's not uh, followed. Even in the issue of where you can go back and say that he did not do this and that. You can only do it a number of times then you get tired of going back uh, to court or rather the thing of uh, uh, them uh, the, the father accessing the children you mm -hmm. can and this is what i would really uh, maybe even duncan will touch on that can you actually force the father to to be in uh, his children's life can you tell him to pick them you know mm -hmm. that something has to be very intentional it has to come in uh, uh, from the parent themselves having that desire uh, to meet them, you know, or, uh, and, or, or support. And yeah. you, are, you will agree with me that that has to come from someone who's looking beyond the small beef that you have, because otherwise you would be using, you know, uh, this issue to punish the mother, which is neglecting the children to punish the mother. Yeah, thank you. When you mentioned something, uh, this calls for a lot of maturity. And uh, you just uh, agree to be civil. You mm -hmm. see, here we have a difference, yes, but there are children who are involved. So we don't need to drag them into this uh, mud. As a father, let me get involved in their lives as much as I can. Okay. And, and we also have mothers who actually uh, punish the men by withdrawing the kids from them. It's mm -hmm. Like you will not see them because you did not do A, B, C, D. Okay. So if we all came at that point of doing what we are uh, required to do, I'm sure uh, we'll be healthy, we'll be uh, all happy plus the children, however yeah. much we are separated. Okay. Duncan, yeah. just briefly respond to what she was saying. And also, do you think the issue of prenuptials would, would make anything uh, better? Uh, in terms of what Jenna said, in, indeed uh, the court can give those orders and will actually indicate that uh, let's assume if the father is to provide uh, for the basic needs yeah. uh, to a large extent and the mother will provide for other, also other needs, uh, the way to policy it will be if one defaults you go back to court through a notice to show cause. But as Jane says, there, you can only do it for so, so many number of times because you can also be tired. Most of these would want goodwill mm -hmm. and would want maturity and would want you to look at the best interest of the child or children mm -hmm. as opposed to the beef or, or the issues that you have between yourselves. And that's why the children's court, the principle is best interest of the child. Any other issue in terms of uh, you two, you take it to the divorce court. Yeah. Issues of property, you take it to the uh, matrimonial properties court. Okay. But going forward in, in terms of uh, the second limb of your question, which was... Uh, 
you yeah the, the issue of prenups or the prenups yeah thank you so much uh, prenups are uh, have no place yet in our jurisdiction mm -hmm. to to an extent that uh, you see it, it it's akin to entering into a marriage and as dan indicated the we come from a religious point of view when we are talking about marriage the article 45 says that ma uh, the union between a man and a woman in terms of a family is a basic unity for the so unit for the society. Yeah. So fundamental is that unit that it is the basis of social order. Mm -hmm. To that extent, even when you are entering into a marriage, it is not expected that you are actually now conceiving mm -hmm. that there, there can be a possible divorce. Because yeah. when you are taking your, you are your actually getting married, you are saying for better for worse, till death do you part, yeah. not till you divorce. Mm -hmm. So that when you now conceptualize a prenup at this particular point, yeah. it is already predetermining a separation, which to a large extent, <laughs> in my view, yeah. I don't think will, will be proper, because why else are you, you getting you, so married? So you think prenups means we are going to separate at the end of the day? You are actually planning for <laughs> your separation, <laughs> because separation is not, you know, is not a, a, a definite thing like death, like, you know. Mm. It, it, people have, the only separation that is definite is maybe... Well, one would argue that if you, if you are putting up prenups, then there's no basis for trusting that maybe we shouldn't even go actually ahead and be together. Exactly, and you know, a marriage is, is a union between man and woman, and you become one. Okay. So that when you already are, are envisaging a prenup, already you can never become one because already you are saying, this is mine, that is yours. Okay. And that is why, even in terms of matrimonial property, it is presumed that whatever you have gotten, whether it is in the name of the lady or the name of the man, it is it is both it belongs to both of you okay. so that prenups uh, as a way forward may not be a, a good solution mm -hmm. uh, unless if you are going into this marriage for monetary purposes yeah then that again will be abusing your your your, your spouse yeah. that you have to sign this because you don't trust your spouse okay. so much and, and and fred you you've clearly heard from the beginning of this conversation the stress the anguish that people uh, go through um, when they are uh, undertaking this process. Maybe in terms of uh, support that people need uh, for this process. Just talk to us about the importance of having this support either from your own family, uh, whether it is an organization, whether it is, uh, you know, places like the church or places of, uh, of, 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 of worship so that at least we can walk this journey that is a bit uh, messy and, 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 and straining to the people involved. Yeah, a lot of support is needed, uh, a lot of support, uh, because uh, this is an issue that is touching so many areas. It is touching the psychological part of a person, the financial part of a person, and also touching the society. This person, as we have listened um, uh, to my colleagues here, Daniel and uh, uh, Jen, they have mentioned already that uh, there is that support they needed from the institutions like the church, uh, and there is that support that is needed by the family. Uh, unfortunately, even our culture uh, does not, not support so much the separation. And this is an issue that is inevitable. And uh, to be sincere, anyone can go through this issue. Mm -hmm. It's not meant for family. Anyone can go through it. And therefore, the, uh, the society needs to understand that uh, this is um, an issue that come up and uh, at some point, for example, when it involves violence, if these people cannot live together, they need to be supported uh, to move apart uh, in a better way mm -hmm. that uh, the children are not going to be affected. Yeah. And as well, this being part of the family and part of the society to be supported. And again, stigma. We need also to reduce the stigma. Okay. Like not to feel this as... Um, less privileged in the society. Yeah. Uh, let us uh, see these partners as people who have gone through issues like any other issue we can go through as human beings. Okay. And uh, also to support them with the prayer, uh, if in case it is in the religious context, uh, to be there for them when they are going for court proceedings, we need to support them. And also uh, they need a lot of counseling and to find... Uh, the right person who can uh, bond with them in that therapeutic relationship uh, okay. uh, to be able to see what are some of the patterns that have been affecting them 
so that even um, as they are moving out, at least they will be uh, well supported to deal with the psychological issues so that uh, these people do not end up uh, becoming also sick. Some of them end up becoming mentally ill and also uh, even uh, having other medical conditions okay. because of the pressure. Okay. I, 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 we have to f wrap up this conversation, uh, Larry and gentlemen, but before I do, let's just sample uh, some quick feedback uh, that you've been sending. As remember, we asked you on our question of the day, what's behind the rise, uh, of course, in uh, divorce cases in recent years. But because I think we are running out of time, let me just get your closing remarks in uh, 40 seconds each. Let me just start with you, uh, Fred, uh, moving forward uh, for this conversation to make it uh, much better and much more easier for people in 40 seconds. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this is a wonderful uh, session. Uh, in fact, what uh, we are getting from this conversation is that uh, we need a society to embrace the issue of divorce as a normal issue. That is the first thing I could like to encourage our viewers, that uh, we need as a society to be there for them and to support them. Another thing is that uh, to encourage those who want to uh, go through a divorce, now that we have had uh, all the perspectives of the process, they need to come out and freely uh, engage in the process with the right person. At some point, they see a marriage and family therapist. At some point, express themselves to a religious uh, uh, figure. At least we have seen that uh, there are people who are out there who could listen to them. It's yeah. only that they may not get to them. At least when they get into contact with one professional, they can be guided. Okay. And then uh, also to deal with the inner issues. Even if there is a separation, let it be formalized. Let okay. it be done in the right way so that uh, it doesn't uh, remain unattended. Thank you, Fred. Dan, in just 30 seconds, your, your closing remarks. Uh, in the event that you are separated or divorced, look for help, psychological help. Mm -hmm. I urge the church and the uh, court uh, system also to come up with support systems. Society to uh, embrace uh, uh, people who have uh, walked through this journey. And um, for those who are not married, don't look at uh, uh, divorce uh, as a uh, discouragement. Marriage is a beautiful thing. Okay. It is not the wedding. It is not the ceremony. It okay. is the, what it is. Okay. Jenny, and, and we forgot to mention that after, of course, your situation, you took up upon yourself to help other uh, people who are in this situation. I'll add you uh, 20 more seconds. So in 50 seconds, your closing remarks, and you mention, uh, of course, the good work that you're doing. Okay. Uh, I want to specifically speak about the, uh, the issue that it's, uh, it's least spoken about, or rather, it's not handled in courts. We've yeah. taken the property matter to court, the children, divorce, but we have the emotional and the psychological aspect of it yeah. uh, that uh, is normally uh, not considered as uh, having too much effect, while it's the one that is really sl is slowly killing people from inside, is slowly d destroying that person. Uh, so uh, through that, I know uh, through my experience, I did not have anybody to hold my hand. Mm -hmm. So through passion, uh, I came up uh, with that. Um, uh, I'm passionate about uh, holding someone's hand who have gone through broken relationships, be it separation or divorce, yeah. and taking them through the healing uh, uh, program. And there's uh, a question that came, why is uh, 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 divorce on the rise? What I would say is not that divorce is on the rise. People are now coming out. People are now speaking. People mm -hmm. are not uh, silent anymore. Mm -hmm. So since we have platforms where you can come and find people who you can speak one language, people who you can relate uh, who can relate with your story, people who can support them. Uh, and one of them is uh, uh, through the Sadref uh, Africa. You can check on uh, sadrefafrica.com. We'll do a lot of work on just uh, taking you through the healing program, supporting you and just making the journey a bit easier and not as messy as you expect. So okay. there's a community out, he out here of uh, the people who have gone through separation and divorce and they are, they are ready to listen to you and they are ready to give you that platform without judging just for you to speak out and get help. 
Thank you, Jenny. And, and maybe yeah. for you, Duncan, then are there aspects of the law that we need perhaps to amend? And I think you alluded to this earlier on uh, so that we can make this process more humane. Yes, it is better to have a, a, a pass, a people separate through divorce than through the chaotic killings that we have been seeing. And the only way is to make it easier, more friendlier and faster. So that the Matrimonial Properties Act needs to be standardized. We need to make it easier for people to divorce and move away from the archaic uh, way of, of, the, of proving divorce in court. And we move, need to make it more friendlier because it has an impact to the entire society in terms of the children and the society at large. So there, there is room for improvement of the law and it should be done as soon as possible. Okay. All right. Many thanks, of course, to my guests this morning who have helped us, uh, dealt, of course, break down the conversation of the day. We have been talking about marriage and, of course, divorce. Many thanks to Dan Kanokachi, an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, joining me in studio this morning, as well as Jenny Washira. She's the founder of Sadref Africa, which you mentioned is an organization that helps people who have been in broken relationships and marriage, as well as Daniel Were, is a civic educator and evangelist as well as Frederick Osoro, who is a counseling psychologist. Something I have to mention is that all the people in this conversation are people who can help you if you have uh, been in a situation, uh, including, of course, divorce or uh, separation, and you need help either from the lawyer, from the counseling psychologist, from the educator and evangelist, as well as, uh, of course, Jenny Washira of Sadrev Africa. We have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation, uh, of course, discussing things that we don't talk about on a normal day. I hope you have done that as well. Remember, Wednesday is the day, is the International Day of the African Child, so that means tomorrow we'll be back to the uh, with you uh, with another conversation about uh, children. But from me and the entire team, it's goodbye for now.